Hi guys! <laughs> For today's video, are you good up there, girl? <laughs> Alright, if you... Do you not want to be in the video? I'm sorry. <laughs> if you've paid attention to any of our recent live streams or if you follow me on Instagram, um, this is nothing new to you. But for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys um, why I'm always hanging out with these little guys. <laughs> Ooh, girl, how am I supposed to fix my hair? But yeah, I'm going to show you guys um, how I raise and have these guys as pets, if you will. Um, a lot of people ask me questions about where I get these. Um, I am going to be showing you the butterfly garden that we gather the caterpillars from. I am not a fan of the kids kits where you send away for caterpillars or like order eggs online or that weird stuff. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. You bet. So yeah, oh, okay, I hit my eyelashes. Was that a butterfly kiss? But yeah, so for today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I raise and play with these little guys and keep them safe and um, how you can do it too. So uh, let's head over to the butterfly garden. So we are out here in South Florida today, which means there are a million different species hanging out around here. But today we're gonna be focusing on the monarch butterfly. The monarch's main host plant is gonna be the milkweed. The butterflies feed on the flowers as well as lay their eggs um, because the caterpillars will eat these little leaves. So because the milkweed plants aren't doing so well right now, I don't know if it's just because of the seasons or if this garden's getting neglected, they're not getting watered properly. But because the milkweed plants aren't doing so well right now, it is a little harder to find the caterpillars. The main reason we do this is because there are so many risks that the monarchs have out in the wild, if you will. Um, they're at risk for pesticides as well as parasites. And I've seen a lot of lizards munching on caterpillars while we've been out here. So, today's goal is we're gonna grab some caterpillar friends, uh, take them home, give them some good, yummy, healthy, pesticide-free food, give them a place to stay, be safe away from the lizards, and uh, yeah, so, so let's get some friends. <laughs> so we found one of our friends on the giant milkweed over here. He is pretty big and pretty healthy looking. So what you'll need when you're out here on a caterpillar expedition, if you will, what I take is just a good old Tupperware from home. Caterpillars have a series of five instars. This big guy is on his fifth instar right now. He's ready to go into his chrysalis momentarily. Typically it's better if you find the caterpillars on their first instar when they're really small. Um, just that way it's easier to avoid um, parasites. They have less exposure to other bugs in the wild, if you will. But because it is pretty slim pickings with the dwindling milkweed here, he's, he's gonna be our guy. It is completely safe to touch the caterpillars. Um, they're not gonna harm you. You're not totally gonna harm them. Personally, I prefer not to, one, because I don't like touching them. Um, two, because I don't like being responsible for the oils and chemicals and products on my hands getting on these little guys. So I typically just take them with the leaf they're on, um, put them right in the tubware, then they have a snack for the ride home. And um, yeah, so let's take them home. Got some nice milk dripping out there. That's the giant. Oh, and he pooped for us. Nice. Lovely. So just put him in there. <laughs> Close it up. And we will take this guy home. Alrighty, so we've got this guy home. And now the next step, what you're gonna need is, first we've got this butterfly housing cage. Um, they come in all different sizes, shapes, prices, whatever. This one I think was 10, maybe 15 bucks on Amazon. So next what you're gonna need is the good old plant on the inside. Here we've got our milkweed plant. Um, typically because these are mainly a butterfly, you know, feeding plant, you aren't gonna find these with pesticides on them. But I got this one at a place that purposely sells for planting butterfly gardens. So this one is safe. Um, we've got a little guy in here munching right now. Um, we've got some other chrysalis friends hanging out. There is this crazy, the milkweed flowers are hanging by the webs. So that's that. But yeah, so all you really need um, is a milkweed plant. This one was five bucks. You're gonna need a cage. We'll just 
take this little guy right out of the Tupperware. Usually if they're on the plastic, they're more hungry and eager to get to the leaves, but I think he's pretty content with his little poop. So let's see. You wanna get on the plant? Oh. A side note, you're gonna wanna keep your furry friends away from these guys. Oh, okay, what are you doing? She knows better for the most part not to mess with these guys, but the milkweed plant and the caterpillars are toxic to dogs, so. Ooh. All stressed out. Oh, it's okay, buddy. Just crawl right on there. So this guy's happy. He's content. He's gonna go hang out with our other little buddy in there. And it's not super exciting for the next few days. Um, they're gonna just spend their entire lives eating as much as they possibly can. So um, we will check in on them to make sure the plant is watered and that they're doing okay. But otherwise, um, we'll see you guys when they're ready to make a chrysalis. <laughs> get a video of how little he is before he grows up on me or she. Look at this little baby. It's the size of a, of a big guy. And there's a little baby over there. Oh, I think it. Then this guy is about a third in star, so. So they'll all be coming out at different times.
Alrighty, so it's been a few days. Um, we just checked. All of our little caterpillars are now in their chrysalis, but we've also got some bad news. So this guy right here, um, as you can see, he's not the pretty green color that you see on these other chrysalises. And on this side, you can see there's a really big black dot on him. So unfortunately, this is our first chrysalis with a parasite. So he is one of the caterpillars that we got that was much larger. Um, usually there are a lot of telltale signs if a caterpillar has been infected by parasites. Usually they're discolored. Um, there's just a lot of like obvious signs. This guy didn't look like anything out of the ordinary really when we first brought him home. So that's why I'm just a little surprised that he's sick. But like I said, when we were over at the butterfly garden, you are at a higher risk to get a caterpillar that does have exposure to parasites when they're large. There's nothing you can do really to prevent this other than removing him from the rest of them so that there's no chance that the rest of them could potentially get sick. So not that I wanted this to happen, but it is good for video purposes to show you guys what a parasite looks like on a chrysalis as well as I get to show you guys how we would relocate a chrysalis. One of the other factors when you're doing this is sometimes chrysalises will put themselves places that aren't safe or just not good, and you will have to relocate them. So, um, with that being said, I will show you guys how to relocate a chrysalis. Typically, it's easiest if you wait until the um, silk or whatever you wanna call it that adheres them to where they're hanging to dry. Um, obviously you don't want to let don't want to let a sick chrysalis be in with all the other ones but give it a little bit of time because it will be a lot more work if the webbing is like wet um, so yeah all you're really gonna need is some dental floss sometimes you'll need a damp q-tip I'm gonna see if I can do it without needing that here we go so you're gonna want a fairly long piece this is probably obnoxiously long but I'm not sure where we're gonna hang him from yet so you'll just take it tie it in a little knot and obviously leave some wiggle room right, so we're just going to take the little loop and go over the chrysalis with it so then you'll slowly tighten the loop you're going to want to leave as much of that black stem if you will as possible get it as close up to the net as you can Sometimes they'll come off easily. There we go. Sometimes you'll need a damp Q-tip. Alrighty. So here's our guy. You're gonna wanna do this over somewhere low so that if you do drop him while you're tying this loop, nothing happens. So we don't wanna totally discard this guy because sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you'll get a life out of it. So we're just gonna hang him over here. And so he will just hang right there. But monarch caterpillars, or chrysalises, whatever you wanna call them, they do need to hang to fully form. If they are laying on the side or just, you know, not hanging, their wings won't form fully. So, um, I mean, he's at least got a shot at that, but um, it's not looking so good for this guy. Um, so, we'll just see what happens. So here we have a healthy color change of chrysalis. Um, this guy, um, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but he's a nice, like, blue color. Um, that means the wings are forming under there, and uh, he'll be out probably in the next 48 hours. So, stay tuned.
these guys came out this morning, so they've been hanging for, I wanna say three or four hours. Um, so they are still very heavy. Oh, and she literally dripped on me as I put my hand underneath. Yum. So, um, as you heard, I said they dripped on me. Um, when they first come out of the chrysalis, they're gonna like look very funny, as you guys saw in the footage. Um, they have to pump their wings full of the fluid that's in their bodies, and any extra fluid just drips out. So. That's the fluid from his wings from before I grabbed him. So, if you see something that looks like blood <laughs> in your butterfly cage, don't worry. I don't even know if their blood is like blood or I don't, I don't really know. But that's not blood. It's just the fluid from them and it's cool. It, it's good stuff, so. That's where you'll find butterflies just flying about. What do you think? Oh, ah, 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 ah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it wanted to bite you, Tate. It's still not. Yeah, he's still drying off. Oof, you are pinching me, girl. Pinching me. Ooh, come here. Come here, girl. You are pinching. Look at that. Oof. Oh. Pinching. Look at that. They do have little, little pinchy fingers. We would have our own egg supply and stuff at the rate of caterpillars that we go collect, but every single time that we've had um, more than one come out of their chrysalis at, you know, at once, always the same gender. Like we had four come out at once one time, all males. Anytime that we have like groups of even just more than one, whenever we've had two, it's always two males or two females. But of course, because we're going out of town next month, this is our first set of male and females. So the female butterflies um, are gonna have thicker stripes and the males, if you see, he has those two scent sacks right here. Wanna do it one more time for me, George? There we go, these scent sacks. That's how you can tell he's male. The female, when she opens up, oh, she, oh, oh, you just dripped on my bed. Well, there's like a big old, ugh. So when she opens up, you'll see those scent sacks are not there. See? Huh. A lot of the time I'll just put them in the cage. Um, stop dripping on my bed, girlfriend. Maybe I should get off my bed. Because they're both still dripping so much, I'm probably gonna put them back in the cage for a little while, let them finish drying and testing their wings out in the cage. And then um, in the next few hours, we will take them out onto the balcony. And the best way to get a butterfly is just let them walk onto your finger. You trying to climb up? I got you, girl. Don't pinch me again, okay? Mmm, climbing on the eye, love that. Oh, don't you kick George out. Hey, no fighting. And also no mating on my head, please. Oh God. <laughs> oh God, oh please don't. Please don't. Okay. Well, this is interesting. life hack when you're taking pictures with these guys um, you're gonna want to have your live photo on <laughs> because almost never will you actually catch a photo like this all right so these guys are ready to fly so we're just gonna let them go right off the balcony double fisting go on guys go eat go go this happens every single time. I'll try and get a video with them inside and they're flying around the house and then you bring them outside and they just, they just wanna hang out and cuddle. Huh, guys? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. As a pair. And they're 
back on. Okay, so I just realized that it's kind of weird that I'm doing the outro with another butterfly because I just showed letting them go. Uh, but as you guys saw, we had a million different caterpillars, so it's been a few days. Got another, another girlfriend right here. <laughs> we are doing some traveling next month. And I also realized I forgot to mention the entire process does take about a month from egg to metamorphosis to release. I don't know. It's early in the morning. I don't know what word I want to use, but I showed you guys how we just let them go because um, until now we haven't had a reason to keep them. We just, you know, give them a safe place to stay and then release them to do their job once they're ready. So I'm trying to wrap this up and I just keep rambling, but like I said, we are going out of town. We're doing some traveling next month. So now the next step that we're gonna do once all the other chrysalises are done is we're gonna take this milkweed plant and go plant it outside. Another important aspect of trying to uh, help restore these guys is not only like protecting them from threats out in the wild but also making sure that they have a steady food supply i watched a video of a guy showing where a, a field was being plowed to do to build um retail buildings and before they plowed it the entire field was filled with milkweed and after it was plowed there was nothing left and so the butterflies had nothing to lay their eggs on and nothing for the caterpillars to eat. So, long story short, another thing you can do to help the monarchs if you're not able to house them yourselves. Like I said before, this milkweed plant was five bucks. I'm sure you can get seeds for cheap too. If nothing else, um, you know, try and get out and plant a milkweed or two because even though you might not have the time to um, like house them yourselves, it's definitely cool to go check on the milkweed because I bet you there'll usually be some caterpillars crawling on it. That, uh, that about wraps up today's video. I'm gonna go take this little girl outside momentarily. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this and wanna see more videos, subscribe, uh, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And um, I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Say bye. There we go. Oh,